The Godox V1 is a light that's been getting a lot of attention lately and in today's video I want to go over some of the reasons why. Some people might look at the speed light and just think that it's a normal speed light with a round head but honestly if you look into it you'll see that it offers a lot more than that. There's a lot of features that make the Godox V1 a worthy upgrade over the current top of the line Godox speed light which is the Godox V862. So in order to not waste your guys time I'm going to go ahead and start talking about them. The number one feature that I really liked is the bright modern lamp. The fact that the light itself has a mining lamp is really helpful especially if you plan to shoot portraits at night or if you plan to shoot in studio because it'll help you get focused on the subject and it'll help you get a preview of how the light's going to fall on the subject as well. The mining lamp has 10 levels with 10 being the highest and 1 being the lowest. Another feature that's unique to the Godox V1 that isn't available in the other Godox V lights is the fact that it can go even wider in the power output with the lowest being 1 256th. Again, this is something that's really helpful in case you want to shoot at low light situations like night for example because having that ability to go one stop lower from 1 one twenty eighth to 1 256 can make the difference between having an overexposed shot or a shot that's exposed perfectly. On a similar note in terms of power, you can actually now adjust the power in 0.1 increments which is going to be perfect for anybody out there who really wants to fine tune their lighting. If you want to adjust the power in terms of those 0.1 increments, you're going to use the dial that's on the speed light. But if you really need to make drastic changes in terms of the power output, like 1 to 56, for example, all the way to full power for some reason, then you wouldn't want to use the dial. That's going to take forever to get from you know, 1 to 56 to full power. So what I would recommend instead is using the D-pad that's within that dial instead, because when you click up and down, it's going to go higher and lower in terms of full stops, which is going to be a lot quicker when you make those drastic changes. When it comes to the round head on the Godox V1, it's going to cause for a more even distribution of light which is going to be smoother and more appealing than a normal Fresnel head on normal speed lights. And to really emphasize this, I went ahead and got the Godox V862, the Godox V1, and I zoomed them both to 105 millimeters and took a picture of a blank wall in my home at 4 feet away and it resulted in these two different patterns. However, I really want to stress that the only people who are really going to see the differences in light between these two speed lights are people who use their light on camera and use it at that 105 millimeter zoom length. No matter what a company tries to tell you, no light source that is small relative to the subject will ever give you soft light. It's just not possible. I even mentioned this back in 2016 in my first YouTube video when I took a picture with an 18 inch Octobox. By adding a lot of ambient light to the photo, you can sort of mask and hide away the fact that the light is harsh, but it's still going to be harsh light. Just a small tip for anybody out there who might watch a video from a company that claims their small strobe will give you soft light. Another thing that the Godox V1's round head offers are magnets which is going to be helpful in using the Godox AKR1 accessory kit which is available for the 8200 round head. The different accessories that are available within the AKR1 kit are the barn door, the grid, the snoot, the gel system, and the reversible black and white bounce card. The menu system is also different on the Godox V1 and in my opinion it's much simpler and easier to use because one thing that they did, one notable difference that they did was went ahead and removed the optical slave and optical radio mode because honestly I never even cared for those in any of the speed lights. Now whenever I want to access radio slave mode which is the most frequent mode that I use on the speed lights because I use them off camera, all I have to do is press two buttons and I'm there. And if you want to use the Godox V1 as a transmitter to control other Godox speed lights or strobes, it's much simpler with the radio master mode being a lot simpler and easier to use and to operate than the other speed lights that the Godox V862. When I was preparing this video and I was using the radio master mode on the V862, I just found it a lot more complicated. It's much, much simpler on the Godox V1. On the Godox V1, they actually also got rid of the rotating dial on the bottom of the hot shoe or where the hot shoe is located. And I honestly never really liked that. It just took forever to just kind of lock on to the hot shoe or wherever you're placing it. They went ahead and just made it into a switch system. So that's a lot easier and a lot more convenient whenever you want to attach the speed light onto something. The light's also rated at 650 full powered shots and it's going to last a lot more than that, especially if you use it at lower outputs. I personally used it at one, two and a half hour shoot. And at the end of that shoot, it still had three bars. So that, you know, that's a testament to itself. One last thing I want to mention is that since it's no longer a Fresnel head and it's now a round head, it won't fit into the Godox S-type bracket, but I believe Godox is working on a round head Bowens mount type bracket so that you can use it with Bowens mount modifiers. Real quick guys, I forgot to mention a couple of things while recording, which is the fact that the Godox V1 can actually tilt a little bit backwards, which is perfect for bouncing behind you at events. It also has a fast recycle time of about one second, which is going to be twice as fast as the V862. The V1 also has the TCM function which is found on the X-Pro transmitter which converts a TTL reading into manual. 
That's all the features that I'm going to be going over in today's video since I only had a prototype Canon mount version so it couldn't access all the features of the Speedlight. Once I get a final production Sony mount version, I'll make another video going more in depth into this light. I believe I mentioned earlier that I'm ending this video with a behind the scenes look that I did using the Godox V1 at a photo shoot with a friend and model Monique, big thanks to her for modeling last minute, and to the owners of the location that I shot at, which is called The Yard in downtown McAllen. So big thanks to them. Hope you guys enjoyed the photo. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe maybe. So yeah, see you guys in the next video.